Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be creating a game for Android. This game is called Four in a Row. It's designed for two players. Each player is going to be getting a different symbol. So it's going to be either an X or a circle. Each turn, each player is going to be dropping a symbol through a grid. Then the symbols are going to be falling down through the grid, occupying the lowest available space. Now, the objective of the game, the aim of the game, is actually to create a line of four pieces, the same type, and this line can be horizontal, vertical, or it could be a slant line. So, let's have a look at the game, and then we're going to be analyzing the code. Let's have a look at the project inside the IDE. So the main activity is going to contain the actual logic of the software and the management of the event. The content main is going to contain the definition of the UI. So if I switch to the design, look what I get. Remember this grid? And if you look at the XML, I think that you could figure it out by yourself what it means. Don't worry about it. We're going to go through all this stuff over here later on. But I think it's pretty obvious, right? The activity main, as we said before, is going to describe the behavior of the uh, toolbar and the floating button and so on. And then here, in the rest values folder, we're going to have this for XML, defining the colors, the dimension, the strings that the software is using, and the styles which are applied to the UI. Um, now I'm going to be shutting down this UI, this uh, IDE, and I'm going to be just working using the terminal interface and the Gradle, because I think if you need to automate this process, it's also important to understand Gradle and working at a um, lower level. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. Okay, we are here. So I go into the app folder and then I go into the SRC and then the main, right? And then let's have a look at the resources first. And let's choose the layout, right? Okay, so the content main, which is going to contain the definition of the UI. Okay, so if you remember the graphical interface, there was a table and that's the way we define table on the UI. So we have the table layout and then each row is defined by this table row and then each object which is contained inside the table row is defined by the text view. Right? So you have a row and multiple text view and then you have another row. So let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And in fact, we add six row and seven column, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? Correct. Now, 
Uh, what's this? Those are the style which are defined in the this file over here. In the values. Okay. So those are the file, the style that we can use here for the cell and so on, right? So let's go back here in the layout. Okay, so we have a few properties and then as we seen before those are defined in the style.xml and I would say they will be all for the UI by the way Right now, you should be able to see the card. If you click on the card, you will be downloading the source code for the application. Uh, if you decide to, to run this application, you do it at your own risk. Please don't tell me that your phone stopped working because of that, although I really don't think there should be any risk. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at the uh, actual logic of the software. So let's say you are in the app directory, and then you do ls. And then you go inside the SRC, and then you do main Java, and then here, that's the domain name of your imaginary company, and that's your application name, right? And finally, the main activity, which is the default one, and in this case, is the one that contains all the logic for the software. So in here, we are declaring an, an array, which is going to contain the X and the circles. This array is gonna have six rows and seven columns, right? This is used to display who's playing. That text that used to be shown um, on the board. And here we are creating a table layout. So this layout arranges its children into rows and columns used to operate on cell via code. We're gonna be seeing how we use this. So in here we have the onCreate method. Now we run the super dot onCreate passing this parameter over here. And we do this because we are basically running our own code in addition to the existing code. Otherwise we will be only running our own code, right? So, in here, we are setting the view to be displayed, and we are also reading and inflating the activity underscore main dot XML, which is going to be used to display the UI. In here, we are grabbing a reference to the toolbar, and here, we are setting the toolbar. In here, we are grabbing a reference to the floating point action button, which is the one that I use to reset the game. And in here, we are setting the action that is connected to the floating button, which actually resets the game, in fact. Now here, we grab a reference to the text view, which displays text to the user. We grab a reference to the table layout and then we initialize and start the game. In here, we have the new game method, right? So we pass a boolean. Here, we read the values from strings.xml and we do some replacement. So basically format, right? And we pass this parameter here to format. And in here, we are basically grabbing the R string player. So that's the class, and that's basically what we're looking for. And then 
that's the parameter we need to read. Okay, so we look through all cells. In here, we grab a cell, and then we initialize the text of that cell to nothing. And also, we need, the, we need to add a listener to the cell so that every time we click on the cell, the software knows that we, we want to do something. Okay, cell click listener, which is the listener for a particular cell. Now, we find the lowest available space in the column, right? And here, we set the cell text to X, X or circle according to who's playing, right? To string. Here, we switch player. Here, we display a new player, right? So here, we check the status, we check whether X is winning or the circle is winning, or we need to check whether the board is full. We might have no winner, for example, right? And then if someone win, then we display that message box, pop-up box, or whatever you want to call it. And then that's the core algorithm. I'm not going to go through this because that's a, a standard algorithm. Really, there is no Android or Kotlin code that I need to, to explain. It's And uh, yeah, I think they will be all. I really hope you've enjoyed this class. Um, please subs subscribe and like this video. And uh, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.